Ready. Hey. Just in the middle of the field, 45, 50. Green grass in front of him, leaving Lions in his way. I am Jeff Joniak. Blitz is on. <laughs> Down he goes. Oscar. What was it like playing for Coach Dicko? Uh, I don't want to answer any questions like that. 61 yards. A Sunday stroll for Justin Fields. Oh, no way. And pick it up, and pick it up, and pick it up. Now, Bears Etc. with the voices of the Chicago Bears, Jeff Joniak and Tom Thayer. The pads are on and the vibes are immaculate. I'm quoting Chicago Bears official Twitter account. They laid the groundwork for what was day six of training camp. Good to be back with you here on Bears Etc. With Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak, your broadcast crew for ESPN 1000 in Chicago and Good Karma Brands. And our Bears podcast rolls on in the week two, Tom. I know there's nobody happier than you right now. <laughs> right. You know, and the thing about it is I'm at the beginning of being satisfied what I saw for the first day of pads. There's a, a real aggressive approach to football, offense, defense, first unit, second unit. No matter how you're fighting for an opportunity, everybody's going at it. And that's what I needed to see. But the thing about full pad football is we need to see it when it goes a couple days in a row. So is this going to be the same team that aggressively approached practice today under some perfect conditions? And do they follow it up with a big, big day tomorrow before a day off on Thursday? So there's still a lot that can result in the next you know, 36 hours, and I'm, I'm excited to see what it is. Well, about 48 snaps, according to Matt Eberflus today, Tom. So this was the moderate start with pads. Then they're going to do maybe double the snaps tomorrow, so it's going to escalate in intensity and then culminate with a third day of even higher intensity. That was the plan all along. Yeah, I mean, you know, they've had a great opportunity to have what they were calling a ramp up program to they get to the full pads. And then when they were ready to put pads on, it wasn't something they had to get acclimated to. It's something they went about business in their usual way. And there's a, a couple of surprises out there. I was excited to see it. But like I said, it's make sure you take him, advance, and you get better day two. Well, before we get into your surprises, uh, we are going to be hearing from Kyle Brandt from Good Morning Football on NFL Network. Tom, I'm not sure it's on your cable system, but uh, it's a great show. <laughs> I watch it every morning. It kind of gets you in a great mood. It's lively. It's upbeat, and he is full of energy. We'll talk to him. He visited Bears uh, camp here with the rest of the National Football League and back together weekend, so we'll hear his perspectives. A grown a Chicagoan out in Stevenson High School territory. So big Bears fan. Had some fun thoughts with him. We'll, we'll talk to him as well. So what are your big surprises today? You holding something back on me? No, 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 no. I'm just, I am excited from what I, I was able to see because, you know, you want to see a physical element all over the board. And I got to tell you, one of the most surprising plays, one of the biggest hits of all practice was Chase Claypool coming in motion. Brisker thought he was going to have an easy blitz in Claypool ear hold him. And he did send him to the ground. Listen, that's a that's a term out of respect. I'm no, not I know. I, I laugh. Brisker. And I and I'm glad that Claypool did it because that's what you have to you have to go about business in order to develop football skills and toughness. And so, you know, we we're gonna see big hits from the offense and defensive linemen and the linebackers and everything. But, man, the eye-opener to me was Claypool against Brisker. Uh, for me, and it's not a surprise anymore, I, I was standing on the sidelines next to some Bear scouts, and, man, when Jaquan Brisker came over the top and swiped that pass uh, along the near sideline as I was standing there, uh, he just kind of shot out of a cannon out of nowhere. Very little room to operate. Toes were down, inbounds, made the interception. It was a wow play. And it's something, you know, Eberflus was asked about it today. He said, well, you know, the New England interception in the regular season, that one still ranks high on his list. But I'll tell you, I, I said it before, man, I have number nine circled. Uh, you know, bigger, stronger, smarter, uh, intense. I think he's going to be the tone setter back there. And if he could take the ball away like that, that's going to be fantastic. Well, let's stretch this a little bit about Brisker because that's one of the topics that I wanted to talk about because when you look at practices, you look at the individual drills, sometimes there's an unfair advantage one way or the other, but it just tests, tests the skills of whatever you're out there uh, competing against. And Brisker is good at everything. He's, he's big, he's smart, he's strong, he's athletic, he's instinctive. And if he takes those types of skills and continues to parlay them into the career – that he's expected to have, 
Listen, man, he's he could be in a, in a list of some of the safeties that you look at in the history of this organization, and you could start mentioning his name, you know, within a within a couple of years. And so Brisker is making big plays, but it's because of his work ethic at the little things is the reason he's good at the big things. All right, nearly every day. Maybe this is one of your uh, surprises. I don't know what you got for me today. Uh, we don't get to talk anymore. Now that we're doing podcasts, we're not allowed to call <laughs> each other on the phone. Do you believe it, people? I mean, Bears fans, we are going to come to you fresh and organic here on Bears, etc. And we are sponsored by United Airlines, official airlines of the Chicago Bears. All right, first play, full team, 11 on 11, the missile to DJ Moore. Uh, one of my favorite Routes in football, favorite in its simplicity and impact. It's the slant and go, baby, and D.J. Moore did. Uh, as about a 68-yard play out running the defender, took a hit but didn't get necked off his pins. He stayed in bounds on an Eddie Jackson hit off the top of the field at the post, and that's a 68-yard touchdown. Middle of the field, Tom. I love the middle of the field. Now, please, tap the brakes. I'm not saying he's Jerry Rice but do you know how many times Jerry Rice took those slants and went for touchdowns, and he wasn't the fastest guy in the world? D.J. Moore's got some speed. That was one of my favorite plays. You know what was the favorite thing about that play to me? Was the construction of the pocket. If you go back and you look at that play on video, look at the perfectly shaped pocket where Justin didn't have you know, any visual problems from the side or any interruptions from the front. And then he was able to sit there and just fundamentally deliver the football to DJ Moore. And I, I really was excited about that play because the, the front competition met the, the long ball opportunity, and I think that's what the Bears want to have. Bears are not going to get into injuries, Tom, but uh, several guys not able to go today. They're on the practice field, though. Uh, rookie running back Roshan Johnson, uh, blasting game at fullback, not there today. Also, Demarcus Walker left today. Uh, Jack Sanborn for a minute left practice. Nate <sighs> Davis wasn't there. Uh, so, day one of pads, some of these things uh, happening. But, you know, thankfully, there's nothing serious, it appears, while the rest of the league, almost daily, almost by the minute, you're seeing, up oh, here's a calf, up oh, here's a knee, up oh, here, here's trouble along the board, broken bones. I mean, you don't want to see any of that. It's inevitable. It's inevitable in training camp. It's inevitable throughout the season. But you just hope you skate through the preseason without any serious injuries. Right. You want to get through the preseason and the regular season. You know, you go look at healthy teams in the playoffs and a lot of them, a lot of them have had safe, healthy years. And this is what you want to get through in training camp because they're going to have a couple practices against the Indianapolis Colts down the road that, you know, it, sometimes you don't know what the tempo is going to be like uh, when you face another competitive team like that, but it is, they got through the practice healthy. Everybody looked good. Like you mentioned the little nicks and dings they have. That's, that's going to happen, but you just want to see uh, the guy who has to step up behind and the guy that's getting the opportunity to get rips takes advantage of them. Tom, I know we do a lot together up here at Hallis Hall. We have uh, the practice viewing suites where we have uh, anybody from season ticket holders to partners, to uh, sponsors, uh, and we give a little talks. So they would take questions and all that. And then I, I, I typically go down to the field if I can just to see some practice. Uh, they're asking about you down there. I know you. You know it's it's not something you, you're very uh, a man of the peopleish up there. And so you continue to stay after I'm <laughs> long gone and tell them how it really is. But overall, I got to tell you, you're missing out. I'll tell you why. The crowds have been great. Tom, I'm walking out there, and, uh, you know, we're going to get the occasional, hey, you are ridiculous, and, you know, <laughs> touchdown, touchdown, Bears. Uh, but they're going to warm you up. They're going to want pictures. They're going to want autographs, Tommy. Are, are you going to open that door eventually? Listen, SRO, man, standing room only. The crowds have been <laughs> unbelievable. I love to see their support because it means a lot to the players. Uh, when you hear a reaction from a big hit, a big catch, you know, something that goes well on the field, it's just awesome to hear their support. But uh, you know what? It is, it is a, you know, a distraction for me because when I do go downstairs, I end up talking and I don't pay attention to football. Yeah. If I sit in the upper level, I can sit there and pay attention with the roster and you see things a lot more clearly. And, and it's, hey, listen, it's no offense to anybody, but, you know, you got to pay attention to when you have so many different things going on all over the field, you got to pay attention. Well, you know, we only get so many practices as um, members of the media, even though we're the broadcasters. You no, know, they close practice during the season. 
So after this three right. week period, you know, you, you don't get to sit there and watch it all live. And but I will tell you, you know, there were a lot of hey, where's Tommy? Where's Tommy? <laughs> so what should I tell him? You're busy working. You're on assignment. Right. I'm watching. You're I'm on watching assignment. Football. I mean, I'm not going to stop and start, you know, whatever with the crowd. <laughs> I, I'm there to look at football. You know, one thing about, again, today's practice and the whole this season starting, you know, Jack Sanborn was always going to be an interesting character when the season started. Was he going to pick up right where he left off? He's kind of a surprise to all of us last year. And Jack plays with really solid NFL linebacker fundamental skills and reading ability. And when you get to see him on the practice and the way the decisions he makes uh, against the running game and such, he's uh, I'm excited to see how the entirety of camp works out for him. Game day snacking calls for good foods. Chunky guacamole made with Haas avocados, tomatoes, onions, cilantro, and a squeeze of lime juice. It's the perfect snack to watch while the Bears win. Score some today. At your local grocery store, game day is guac day. What's on your menu today, Tom? What are you cooking? I would have no tomatoes. I'm a big fan of guacamole, but right, just but not in an abundance of tomatoes. Tom always gives me his tomatoes if we're on the team flight or getting a meal. <laughs> he hands me his tomatoes. So, but but what's on your menu today? You're always cooking up something. What do you got? I, I, I'm going freezer delight. I'm a person that cooks a lot of food in advance and that stores it in certain types of um, uh, amounts, and then I freeze it. And so I'm actually took out this thing, and it was one of the uh, Javi, Javier from the Bears that taught me this recipe. It's called Perineal. Perineal. Never heard and of it. It's an unbelievable pork shoulder recipe. <laughs> I don't. This is not what people want to hear. But yeah, they do. Because remember, look, it's spontaneous. This is what we talk about. We got to so, get used to this, Tom. Where they want to, they want to look inside our lives outside of just well, talking. This bears. is what you know, I asked Javier. You know, Javier is he's Puerto Rican, and I said, "What what is the best thing that your mom makes it for your family in traditionally?" And he told me this recipe, and so I've learned it, and I've cooked it now six or seven times, and it's just unbelievable and so i did take some out of the freezer and that's well, my night you know what uh, from time to time you'll you'll be uh, a nice friend and you'll you'll bring me some food uh so yeah i'd like to give that a taste at some point like to give it a taste I'll bring you some i bring you some friday because i'm gonna make a whole one on thursday nice because i i you know i went with uh Whatever left it, roasted chicken I had last night from uh, buying it at Jewel, Osco, where you can score huge savings, by the way, on an impressive lineup of items. <laughs> With Jewel, Osco, for you, this handy app features hot digital deals on everything from premium produce and savory snacks to butcher fresh meat and more. Get additional details at JewelOsco.com. So, yeah, last night, after a long 10-mile walk, run, wow. uh, bike, it was uh, the triple threat last night, soaking wet. Really a good workout, and then I had that chicken, threw some mozzarella cheese on top over a bed of spinach, Tom, and a little bit of, uh, what kind of dressing was it? I don't I don't remember the dressing, but that's what I did. That's the best I can do. It's a be I wasn't creating anything off a menu, Big Tom. Not like you. No, it's just nice that you be able to cook at home and supply yourself after a workout like that because you know you got a nice long day the next day up at Hallis Hall. All right, we've had plenty of visitors already in the first week plus of training camp. We had uh, Keyshawn Johnson drop by. Uh, not sure exactly uh, what his role was, but he's uh, always good Good to see you around here. Coach Dave Wanstatt patrolling the yep. field today. Uh, you're Best buddy and our former broadcast partner and seven-time consecutive Pro Bowler Jay Hilgenberg got a got a big hello from Jay showing me pictures of his grandchildren and uh, also Scott Pioli. You know what he told he he told me that Mike Tomzak, who coaches at Youngstown State, tore his quad and had to get his surgery on that. So well wishes to go wow. out to Mike Tomzak out there who's coaching and but that's just an ugly injury also. Yeah, it is. I, I don't know. Well, you're not on Twitter, so you wouldn't know, but. Uh, Coach Tom Zach <laughs> is uh, is now doing a daily motivational um, drop or whatever you want to call it every day, uh, keeping people fired up out there. Here's one. This was six hours ago. Remember that our vows aren't just about ourselves. They ultimately impact other people. Onward we go. Uh, leadership is not about pulling people to follow your path. It's about shining enough light for them to find their own route. And he ends with onward every single time. Uh, you know him very well. Where, where's all this starting from? Uh, you know, he's he's always been a thinker. He's always been a heady guy. Uh, it's, I don't think it's unusual for him. He's, you know, he's 
uh, just, you know, that, that type of, that, that type of guy. All right. So I was, I was saying who's been visiting and we also had Kyle Brand here last weekend. Always good to see him. Huge bears fan. Had a chance to sit down with him. He gave me some of his time. Let's listen in to the host of good morning football on NFL network. Well, I've been trying to talk to this guy in one of our Bears programs for several years, but he's just too damn busy. That, that's the bottom line. Kyle Brandt from NFL Network, native Chicagoan, local guy in town for training camp. Good to see you as always. I'm thrilled to talk to you. I just stepped foot on the Bears campus for 10 <laughs> seconds. 10, literally. And Joniak went off the top rope, clotheslined me, and said, let's do the pod. I said, let's go. I got myself a Royal Crown Cola. I'm ready to talk some bears. I'm thrilled to talk to you. You know my guy. You know, I, I love your work. And you're just, you are, I say this um, in a way that uh, you should be taking positive. Okay. And because wait. because you are so busy. It's just not NFL Network, Good Morning Football. Yeah. I mean, your, your vast impact on uh, all things entertainment continues to grow. Thanks, bud. Fill us in on what's going on with you outside of just NFL Network. Just had a long time off, which is fantastic. And I know you get around and you like to travel. I did the same thing. This time we moved with two kids and we're living in boxes and I'm using my wife's razor. And it's, <laughs> it's been that kind of summer. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So now yeah. it's like we're back. And so I got the two little kids. My son Calvin's going to come here today. He wants to meet Justin Fields. I promised him he could. I hope he can. And um, it's just, I'm just like you and I'm we're on our own way like these guys outside right now. Like it's back to work right now. Oh, yeah. No more vacations. No more skiing. No more gallivanting around. Like I'm in depth charts and I'm watching video and um, I'm reading Bear, Bears fans surveys to see who they love and <laughs> they love Brisker and they're not so sure about the new guys that's exciting yeah they se love Brisker. Se seven days a week <laughs> this is what happens you turn it on it's it's like the internal clock and you, you played college football yeah. so I'm sure every August comes around you start to get a little itch to you know get on the throw the helmet on it maybe is, still because you, you look fit to hit I, I feel pretty good yeah you, you look good you look good. I don't know about fit to hit, though. The knees go fast. <laughs> I play tennis now. I can't even move around the baseline. Time out. What? Tennis? Yeah, I'm getting into it. I don't even know anything about tennis. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to pick up tennis. My mm -hmm. girlfriend, Christine, says, oh, no, there's no more tennis. It's pickle. Oh, so she's playing pickle, yeah. and I played pickle twice. I call it wiffle ball. <laughs> And it is fun, you guys and, are and so I'll cool offend people. And so trendy. See, you're you young like yet. I'm old. I'm uh, over 60. You have to move less, so. right? Well, not necessarily, but it's easier to hit than a tennis racket. I tell you, I, I get on the tennis court, and I, I'm sort of still put together. I can move. I'm so bad at tennis. I'll be matched up against a guy who's 25 years older than me and 80 pounds heavier than me, and he kicks my butt, just whips <laughs> this thing. He can just hit that thing, and I'm running all over the court, and I'm just like, can we just stop and wrestle and go get a beer or something? I can't. I'm terrible at tennis. I'm awful, but... I would take on you guys a pickleball and probably get work, too. Yeah, yeah, you, it would. you get a good sweat, at least, that's for sure. Kyle Brandt, our guest here on Bears, etc. This is only episode three, so you're three? on the cutting edge oh, of the first Bears uh, podcast this ever. great. In terms of a legitimate podcast. Well, we not not Jeff. something that's repurposed for a no, podcast. No, 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 this is the real This thing. is the real deal, and unfortunately, Tom's not here, so you I can't see Tom. Because the 85 world, Bear. as we know, Jeff, needs more podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get a podcast to somebody talking in a I microphone mean, about a topic? I resisted for a long time, but they, <laughs> but say, they say I must do it, So and have fun with it on yeah. top of it. Uh, so you, you mentioned Brisker, and Love it's them. funny because uh, do, I do a lot of speaking engagements here mm -hmm. with uh, sponsors and partners coming in and everybody asked me hey you know who you got I, I got number nine circled i got number nine circled so he without pads yet pads don't start till next wednesday he looks thicker bigger more confident right. and I, i'll tell this little story to Do you it. because uh, uh on one of the games last year and i don't remember which i, I get on the team plane and before we even getting to our seats brisker's got his ipad open and he's going through play Really? So he's committed. The get, the kid's committed. He's a he's he's a bad man. Okay, he is a tone setter back there. And now a second year. I mean, he can blitz. He can cover. He can make. He can give you some pain. So Sorry. I'm thinking that's going to be a big a big part of the Bears' defense this year. Now I know everything's about the line of scrimmage, and I agree. But you were right on path with Brisker, for sure. I like to hear that. And there's something about him, too, that's likable. I like that number nine. We all love that. I love that he's got something to say. He's a good <laughs> quote. He was the one who was talking about Fields and Moore and being like, they're like best friends out here. Like, it's almost weird. He's got something to say. I just feel like there's been a history when the Bears are good right. of having DBs who are kind of the attitude and the characters. Like, I'm talking about, you know, 
Nate Vasser used to talk. That I love the brief R.W. McCorders period when he used to talk. <laughs> I remember R.W. McCorders holding up a sign on the sideline, being like, "Do you believe in us now?" And like, I just I like the D, the Bears DB who has a little something to say. And then when you say he's hitting the film on the team, oh playing, yeah, it's yeah, even better. yeah, he he's putting the work in for sure. I, I just think you're gonna when you watch practice, yeah. I think you're gonna like the the effort and the speed, and they're longer, they're stronger, they're faster. There's a lot of speed on this team right now. And, yes, there's a, still a hill to climb, of course, yeah, and there's. development is all about it, but they have a plan, and I, I hope they stick to the plan. You're a born and bred Bears fan, Big so time. you've seen some of the highs and a lot of lows, obviously, the roller coaster ride. What what has you most geeked about this team as you've uh, done some early homework? It's a lot of things. I Listen, it's. I mean, it starts with number one and number two. I'm sure. excited as yeah. hell about Fields and more. I, 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 you've seen this thing. It cracked me up when I saw the nugget where – DJ Moore in this very young stage of his career has more career receiving yards than any bear ever, like in yeah. the Bears all time leader. In fact, I had a Johnny. Like if he you put him on the all time list, he's number one. So like that's just a big time deal here. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they're gelling together, and it's like I started to think about so you picture this, Jeff. It's week one, it's Bears, Packers. Come out for the first bear snap of the season, first and ten from the twenty-five. And it's Justin, and we got maybe a double tight end with Komet and Tanyan, and Mooney's out there, and Moore's out there. Maybe you just spread them all wide and Claypool's out there. I like that offense. Yeah, I'm yeah, excited yeah. about the offense. Yeah, I keep saying if all these guys play to their potential, you got a little basketball team with some speed on it. Yeah. And Justin is the secret weapon at all times. You never know what he's gonna do. And if that happens, it could be a bonanza. I now I have to be realistic, also, right? Why? So you know, it's July, uh, yeah, don't. exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, I'm being accused of being way too positive. So I did the exercise with uh, my new partners at ESPN 1000 here mm-hmm. in Chicago, mm-hmm. our new flagship, and they they put a they they put me up to the task of going through the roster when the schedule came out, and I said I don't do that ever. So sure. they but they shamed me into it. And I, I couldn't help myself as I'm going through it. And I literally, it was when a flop sweat. I, <laughs> I was soaked because I, I got so passionate about it and they're okay. giving me a hard time. I got to 11. I, I somehow you got, got to 11. To, I got, now, I know, now I, do I really believe 11? <laughs> Man, but the way it stacks up, you can talk yourself into a well, successful you know season, start- especially when you're injury free mm-hmm. right now, knock on wood. You got a third year adjusted, the so-called takeoff year. You know, everybody's comparing it to Jalen Hurts and your guy up there in Buffalo, Josh Allen. They all got that big receiver to come in, in Diggs, A.J. Year. Brown. We got, and, you know, we got we got our guy, right? So I got into Wordle here in the last month and a half. My cousins in Ohio Amazing. got me involved, and now I'm addicted. Those three receivers all are five-letter Wordles. God, that's good. I've how never about that? played – yeah, how Jack, about that? Let me let me tell you what for I'm you Wordle for you. fans. You're being forced into a lot of things. <laughs> right, Wordle, right. a podcast, pick predicting wins. Jeff, right. you got to put right. your foot down at some point. That's right, uh, Kyle Brand, our guest. So outside of NFL Network, I know yeah. you're involved with yeah. Omaha Productions. Yeah. How's that going? Anything in the pipeline that you are able to talk about? Yeah, and yeah, fill me in because uh, uh, you are highly entertaining. Thanks, bud, and so are you. I, I get to work with the Mannings. I get to do a show in my basement. I get to talk to Josh <laughs> Allen once a week. I get to do these crazy things on the weekend for CBS where I do these like long vignette pieces that air on the NFL Today and James Brown introduces them. There's so much work. The writing is really difficult, but it's unbelievably fun to do. And um, this is the time, man. Fish in a barrel. It's football. Yeah constantly and it's to be able to talk about the bears here at the facility is so cool because normally i'm in new york and occasionally the bears will come up but it's my favorite team to talk about my childhood bedroom is i don't know two miles from where we're sitting right now which is crazy lincolnshire and then my mom lived in lake bluff for a while so the fact that there's excitement about the bears fact is we don't talk about them a lot in december and november but july right now i hope we do this year i'd like to too yeah i'd like to again you know start fast and make December mean something. A lot of home games. Yeah. Maybe the weather's going to turn, if I dare say, angry, and we can have some angry runs. Let's go. Yeah, I, I don't know how you do that. I don't know where the energy comes from. I'm a coffee drinker. I still can't get the kind of energy you have. You, you're still young, though. So, sort of. you know, you're young, and you're just 
cramming everything you can into that uh, five-pound right. bag. People ask about what, what what do you do before angry runs. Yeah, they, seriously. There's all these suggestions of narcotics and all the crazy. No, no, no. It's more like just fear that I'm not going to have anything to say. It all comes from insecurity. So I just I jump around a few times. Yeah, get I go yourself back lathered up. In football in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. ready to crack skulls, and then before I know it, it's over. Running back and linebacker or just yeah. running back? Running back, outside yeah. linebacker, yeah. Stevenson Patriots. 96 Patriots my senior year team. Pretty good. Yeah, one question. Yeah. Uh, is that all ad lib? Pretty much, yeah. That's the amazing part of it all. <laughs> I mean, just whatever comes to your mind, it's on there. Well, because it's if outstanding I scripted stuff. it, the NFL would be like, you're not saying that. <laughs> so I can't have a script. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission, Jeff. You know that. Well, hopefully you'll have a few angry runs from yeah. uh, Deontay Foreman, yeah. uh, Khalil Herbert, yes. uh, Roshan Johnson. We got some running backs here. So, And, of course, Justin Fields, who can deliver some punishment, too. To, you know, the only guy on the Bears roster who won angry runs last year was Chase Claypool. And he won it his last game as a Steeler, and then he became a Bear, and he got the shirt and the scepter and everything. So I know everyone's looking for big things from him. So yeah. I hope you yeah. can send him a few scepters as well. Well, I appreciate your time. Enjoy course, your man. work. Everybody tune in, NFL Network, Good Morning Football, and more from Kyle Brandt. Thank you, buddy. Anytime. Again, I, I know you don't watch that show. You, you don't have it on your system, I do, right? I do. You do? No, I, and, well, oh, you, when, were, when you were joking uh, with me then. Okay. No, I mean, at one house I do have, when I'm at my mom and dad's house, I don't have it because I don't have a sophisticated cable. But when I'm at my house, I do have it and I do watch it. Which, so which, I'm super familiar with it. Which leads me to this. You know, Scott Pioli was here this week also. I enjoyed talking to him. We'll hear from him in our next podcast coming up on Friday this week. Uh, great, great stuff about Ryan Poles and about Justin Fields. All right, so let's talk about Justin because certainly, as we indicated last week, every conversation begins Tell me how Justin's doing. Tell me where he's progressing. Tell me what's going on. So I asked Tom Thayer, the analyst, uh, what's going on with uh, Justin Fields these days? What are you seeing? You know, uh, one thing I like is the the relationship that we wanted to be with DJ Moore is there, and it's evident, and it's obvious, and they have a good working relationship. But now we're starting to see guys like Chase Claypool, who had a nice day, see, you know, inside the red zone, in the regular uh, offense as a, as a wide, wide receiver and some contested catches. And like I said, that big block against Jaquan Brisker, um, which so we you know I don't think we can judge Justin just on one receiver so everybody has to have a part in it you know Robert Tanya is growing some interest at oh, a tight end kind of a wide receiver unique really uniquely built um, uh, receiver out there and so is uh, uh, Cole is coming along like we want him to and he needs to so I, I like what I see out of Justin again let's have a couple days in pads to see what the body's in, in his face and arms up in the air from the defensive lineman, and we'll get a better picture. But, I, I, like I said, I'm super super encouraged after day one of pads. Do you want him to play in the preseason? Yes. I want him to play as much as he possibly can. There's a significant amount of time off before the last preseason game and the start of the regular season. I don't want Justin to go out there and run. I would. I don't want him to go out there and rely on that. I would rather see him throw an incompletion than take off and, t and jeopardize getting hit. But do I want to see him play? I want to see all the starters play. Um, they need it. They need time to gel. And the actual football is, is something I think it can benefit them like I said, when you talk about that window, that open window before the season. Oh, he's getting so much attention. You know, Dan Orlovsky <laughs> expecting MVP-type play from him this year. Uh, ESPN's Mike Greenberg, my good buddy uh, from back in the day, saying uh, Justin Fields is going to be the next superstar quarterback. There's a lot of hot takes right now on Justin Fields. Uh, he is getting a ton of uh, – play on on the on the big screen on TV uh, every highlight from training camp is being featured every big play and uh, with DJ Moore being his guy at, at this point the number one receiver on this team that connection is going to continuously be analyzed and get a lot of play out there yeah but but you know so Cole committed equally 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 as well with getting a new deal like he did and what he should do for an offense with the a developing rate relationship with Justin in more attention paid to DJ Moore in the rest of the receivers, Darnell Claypool, EQ St. Brown, um, you know, Valus Jones, Jr. All those guys. So I, I think that, you know, 
I think when they talk about the explosiveness of Justin on the outside looking in, they're talking about his running ability and how he burst out of the scenes last year. Do those types of fans want to see the thrower Justin Fields or the runner Justin Fields? That's what I would like to know out of those away from the bear personalities. Bears, etc. is brought to you by PNC, official bank of the Bears. Okay, he talked about Cole. Those red zone numbers uh, in 2022, 10 targets, 8 catches, 6 touchdowns in his career, 28 and 16 targets, uh, excuse me, 28 targets, 16 touchdowns. Is this an area of growth? I believe it is because middle of the field, again, more middle of the field throws I can um, make and and have a connection on, especially as you close in on the red zone, whether it be low red zone or high red zone, it's, it's great with me. Right. You know, the thing about Cole is if you double the production of this past year, that's a heck of an effort inside the red zone. And he has those capabilities. It's just about the bears offense, being able to get inside the red zone. And when those opportunities present themselves, they got to get Cole into the right matchup and Justin's got to be able to identify it. So you would think that you would hope that Cole's production in terms of tight end in red zone catch or touchdowns and red zone catches, it, it goes up significantly over the next over and for the next three or four years. All right, so pads came on. Who are you looking to see in pads, and then what did you see today? Uh, I'll go first of who I wanted to see, and it's really it's it's about guys that I have had my uh, focus on all this time. One was Tyreek Stevenson, the rookie uh, <laughs> uh, uh, cornerback. That was one. I wanted to see Jervon Dexter, and I am extremely impressed with big number 98. We'll get into that. And the third one I wanted to see was – Well, it's a combo of Darnell Wright and Tevin Jenkins. I just want to see, and I'm going to throw Braxton in there. So, so not just three guys, but Braxton Jones, where he progressed and taken on a bull rush, for example. So what, what about you? You know, I'm kind of saying, you know, for me, seeing a guy like Noel Sewell, uh, here's a linebacker that has a little bit of size behind him. What, 6'2", 250 pounds. You know, how is he going to hold up when an offensive lineman's coming at him at this level with a couple steps before they hit? Nice job of being able to shuck the blockers coming at him. Nice job of pass responsi- responsibilities covering downfield. Nice lateral pursuit by him. So, you know, when you think of the linebacker and the depth of that they need to have maybe this is like last year's dbs uncertainty but now they have depth behind uh each, or edwards and tremaine but you know that's the thing about it is um gosh uh, uh, tj edwards i like what i see out of him and he you know he's an experienced veteran free agent so you think that he's going to be ahead of the curve and obviously he is he looks good at his position he's fluid and he moves well but then you're going to talk about the other the offensive lineman you talk about but You know, Braxton kind of caught my eye a little bit because he looks a lot thicker up top. He looks bigger. He hasn't lost any movement. He's got that, you know, that bendability that you need that Darnell has that really works well with it. And then you look at Darnell Wright. You know, you go back to back uh, one-on-ones. And so the first outside rush that went to his outside shoulder, Darnell was able to get inside the path, stop his path of the quarterback, and then push him outside that circle. So then they go, oh, hey, let's go number two. This is what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to head fake him and then take a hard inside path across his face. Darnell boned him right on his first step, drove him right into where the offensive guard would be and stalemated him right at the line of scrimmage. So it was nice to see that type of versatility in between the two. Can I interrupt you right there? Because uh, when you watch him, and this is my takeaway, this is the notes I wrote, you know, you feel him physically. You feel him Correct. physically when he's on the move. You feel him physically when he stones you quickly. Uh, and, and so much more to learn and to digest uh, here at this level, but that that's that's something that makes me excited. Uh, how about Dexter? I know he's on your list as well. Uh, he lo- he just looks long and strong, and he's playing a different style here versus college. I think he's going to be a much better player maybe than scouts anticipated right out of the gate. I know he's a second round pick, but it's it's depend uh, dependent on the system you're running, the scheme you're running, what they're asking you to do. They're asking him to get upfield, and he is doing so. Right. He is a 
horse in there. He is. I, I'm going to nitpick a little bit because I really like everything you said. He uses his length very well. He's got good snap count anticipation. Once he gets into the crease or even with the offensive lineman, he's able to push up field. But there's a couple one-on-ones that he won so quickly, <laughs> he didn't run all the way through to the bag. He just turned around and went back, got back in line. So – Kind of take that immediacy of the win and take it all the way through to where the quarterback's going to be. And, you know, that's so minor. That's just the old curmudgeon type of me to keep, you know, follow through. Everything is continuous effort. But yeah, I, I like what I, I like what I saw out of him. Um, and then Pickens, um, what number did he? I know. I just, uh, I actually have to have the roster. Oh, he's not big Pickens is 96. Zach Pickens. Yes. 96. Also very interesting, big, thick, strong guy. I think the more reps that he gets, he's going to be a better understanding of how offensive linemen are trying to attack him initially. And I think he's going to have a better punch with power because of it. All right, let's uh, take on the Tyreek Stevenson because that's it's somebody that I see uh, being a guy that just goes out there. He has a memory that's flushed. He does not get worried about getting beat. He goes right back at it. He is feisty, and I like the way he plays. Now, he's splitting some snaps with that other rookie, Terrell Smith from the University of Minnesota. Both are making plays. Both made plays today. Uh, where are you looking at that? I know you had a thought on Stevenson you were going to share with me on this podcast. What might that be? No, I, I was going to share one with Roshan Johnson, but we're going to save that for down the road. No, I, I like, you know what? You probably made me, ca- you know, you talking about Tariq Stevens makes me uh, catch his eye more than anything else. But, you know, he's, he's making plays as a rookie, having a confident six foot, 214 pound cornerback that could come in and possibly compete for a starting job on day one. Um, it, it's pretty awesome, but I like the competition he has because I think all of us to get the best out of us over a period of time, you need a little bit of that competition to to get the best out of you. Well, he's getting the best from DJ Moore. He says he, quote, hates his body control. He says that in a good way because that's, that's, that's a great thing to have as a receiver, but it challenges him. And, you know, you just can't line up and play everybody the same like you did in college and just rely on your techniques, excuse me, on your athleticism. Here it's technique and knowing who you're going up against. you gotta, you got to defend everybody a little differently. And they come in all shapes and sizes here from DJ, who's not – uh, he, he's fast, and he's he's not the size of Claypool. You got to deal with Claypool's physicality. You got to deal with the quickness and the speed and the shiftiness of Darnell Mooney. Uh, the flat out speed of Tyler Smooth, who caught a deep ball uh, from Justin Fields today, uh, down the middle of the field, one on one with his safety. Or no, actually, it was not the safety. It was the corner. Uh, and in this case, uh, perfect connection. You know, a, a throw that. That rookie had adjusted to the football just a little bit and made the move on a veteran's uh, cornerback in Greg Stroman, who's had a good camp as well. You know, one thing about the group of receivers that they have on that size that you mentioned from DJ Moore to Darnell Mooney uh, to Tyler Scott, that group of guys, and even Valus for that matter, they're, they're very sudden. They have a very sudden ability to movement to get defensive backs a little bit off balance. And if you can take that suddenness and that kind of more of a compact frame than EQ St. Brown or Chase Claypool, you can really create some nice two-on-two matches off to off to one of the sides of the formation or even create a, you know, a, a more explosive matchup for the suddenness that you have out of some of these receivers. Miller Lite, the official beer of the Chicago Bears. Tastes like Miller time, Chicago. All right, let's talk uh, Tevin Jenkins. That was the other guy I wanted to see out there. He's getting adjusted to left guard. Met the media today. Had a lot of different things to say. Now, did you hear the news conference with Tevin talking about how he's on the left side, getting more and more comfortable, uh, pass pro as well, but he he needs to... He mentioned something about moving his right leg out to get underneath him more. Um, did you hear that conversation? Well, I mean, I, I think this, uh, a stance is always a work. Uh, you know, it's always a work in progress. It's You know, there's different ways that you like to get in stance according to what your assignment may be, but you need them to look as most as similar as they can possibly be. You never want to show off balance or any indicator to a defensive lineman to give them an, a, a better chance to guess what you're doing. So I, I just think, Tevin, it's all about balance, understanding, you know, how to get comfortable in a stance that 
I don't know how often he used a three-point stance in college. I don't know how many he used a three-point stance at guard in college. So it's all a little, and it takes a little bit of time, especially well, when you go from no pads to pads on because your body feels completely different. The way your head fits back into the little groove in the shoulder pads is not as comfortable and easy. All right, what do you think that's been going on over the course of the week uh, around the league? You got some big injuries, of course. You got some uh, big statements, which is uh, a byproduct of uh, s- social media availability. Uh, you know, everything from uh, coaches talking about players to players talking about uh, coaches to ex, uh, ex-bears <laughs> talking about coaches and Sean Payton um, with his little analysis of the former Denver Broncos coach, Coach Hackett, now with the New York Jets. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I think Sean Payton opened up Pandora's box because in the entire existence of the NFL and the head coaching community, there was never kind of this disgruntled or disrespectful kind of trash talk that one team went after another team. And um, I, I just didn't agree with that. But, you know, it's social media. It's the things that you put up with. It's you know, uh, you know, you know, Justin saying that he, you know, he looks his attempt is a throw for four thousand yards, which that would, I would love to see that more than anything, just because I, he would talk about his advancement and his uh, ability to stay safe, aggressive passing football, um, and then Eddie Jackson saying that he wants to have a historic year as a Chicago Bear at the safety position. That's that's big news. That's big terms, and that's a big ask because I went back and I looked at the safeties over the history of the Chicago Bears, and you look at some of the names in that Rolodex of safeties from the NFL. I mean, that that's a, that's a heck of a statement to say you want to have one of the better years in, in Bears history and then look right across the field because Jaquan Brisker, he he's the type of guy that could have an incredible, incredible year at safety for the Bears. All in all, uh, a good start to training camp, Tom. Everything's yes, looking good. Yes. Uh, a lot of analysis yet to go and a long road to get to week one against the Green Bay Packers. United Airlines, official airlines of the Chicago Bears, one of our sponsors here on Bears, etc. That's going to wrap us up for today. Tom, you good? You got any final thoughts? I'm just looking forward to tomorrow and listen on Friday because we'll be able to be at practice and give you a little bit of an indication how day two was answered from an aggressive day one. Thank you for listening, everybody. Please subscribe now on the Chicago Bears official app, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll talk to you on Friday. Thanks very much. For Tom Thayer, I'm Jeff Joniak. Have a great day and bear down.